And we're back again, guys. We are here for round three of the German Open number two in Cologne. Indeed. With a whopping amount of 622 players joining everybody in Cologne. We're here in Magdeburg today, mm -hmm. casting for you. <laughs> me, that means uh, Leonard König and me, Sebastian Lemke, ready for a hype day of Yu-Gi-Oh! And we are in round three now, and there we have our two players. And we already have the starting hand of the first player, and it looks like Powell is ac actually playing Sky Strikers. And so we are now getting the hand of his opponent, which is Stefan. Maybe, so, we don't know yet. Uh, I think like world's leading board, uh, the world's board leading Paul. Oh, it is a Paul S at least. I mean, I cannot say for sure, but at least is a Paul S as he's saying. And I haven't seen a lot of Paul S lately. Like in the in the, in the <laughs> that was a little misleading. I, I can assure you that. But I mean, do you know anybody else that is called Paul S? Like a player? That comes to your mind when we're thinking about being very good. So, so it is his chance. It is him. So do, do, you're seeing me snack on pizza, and then you're asking me a question. Are you serious? <laughs> I thought we were a team. I'm sorry. But I'm anyways, sorry. Um, oh, I saw you. Some of you guys asking for that in the chat. We are actually seeing the Salomon Great versus Sky Striker matchup right there. That is. A really interesting matchup actually because it is like the most popular matchup at the moment and uh, some people say it is really really favoring the sky striker deck and i can assure you there is a bit of an advantage if you know what you're doing with your sky striker deck yeah i think so too but still if you're a very good salmon grade player you can definitely overcome that too but the oh the starting hand of the salmon grade player looks bad yeah, if he, if, like, he, he needs another monster, oh, yeah, but it does not look like he has another monster. That fifth card probably, I mean, it may be a hand trap, but he drew into the Sanctuary, which is always a brick, and then he does not have a monster at all. And like, Rage and Raw are both like kind of dead at the moment. Rage can at least do the Raigeki break effect, but that's like a minus one, obviously, so it's not very good. And the Sky Striker player just starts off by searching Ray, and as we all know, Ray is Bay. So that is indeed true. And also he like nearly had the Holy Trinity being upstart Rota and terraforming to immediately have Oof. your three spells into the grave. That feels so good yeah. to just see that in your opening hand. Getting engaged too would be insane, but like also going drones uh Hayate adding engage back. That should be good, yeah. Should be enough. Also, yes, uh, there can only be one. <laughs> You're already going for the joke? <laughs> Not yet. Now, there can only be Juan is my usual yeah. go-to joke with this card. That's true. Did he just affect? Ooh. So that is actually oh, yeah. not that he, important. He has drones. Because so he has drones, fine. right. And that was the last card we were missing out of Steffen's hand. So... There's no further interruption, there's just Rage and Raw. I mean, basically, he could use the Rage by Geki Break effect on the drones, on the drones token. Like, Doesn't he need to tribute or discard a monster card? Is that the case? You might be right, yeah. Guys in the chat, just help us out. Do you need to discard for the uh, monster for the Geki Break effect of Salomon Great Rage? Yeah, but all in all, it's just not a very good situation to be in for, yeah, <laughs> for our Solomon Great player right there. Oh yeah, okay. Thanks guys in the chat. You need to discard a monster. So both the Solomon Great Raw and the Solomon Great Rage are dead. Yeah, okay. It sends from field or hand, of course. Yeah, it does not discard. That is actually true. What a know-it-all. <laughs> So yeah, from that point on, we, we talked about that a lot. If you're in that position against Sky Strikers and they really start to get their engine going and you already have a pretty bad hand, you know that you're going to lose. At that point, you're just like, yeah, I will probably have to wait like some turns because Sky Striker is not doing a whole lot of damage on its own. And maybe I drew top deck into like something crazy, but 
Settlement Grade actually does not have that many crazy top decks, so it will be pretty hard. And I think that game is basically over already. Ray, take out for Hayate. Is, yeah, I, I wanted to say that 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 just loses you the game in CMB. Ooh. So somebody was saying in the chat that you should better send Ray with the Hayate, but I think it's just so much more important to get access to your yeah. to your um, engage. That is your main card, and you definitely need to grab it there. And you can ensure to get the. Ray into the graveyard later on. You have Ari on the field, so you can just search for multi role in the end phase with Shizuku. Yeah. So you have your Ray access for next turn. Yep. And like with there can only be one, and Shadrite right, doesn't really look like you're in a bad spot now. <laughs> that is uh, probably true, yeah. So let's see what is that one card he top decks there. He's shaking his head, so it's probably not really a game winner right there. I don't know why they're having a counter on the Ray. Oh, they're probably uh, stating out that Ray is negated for two turns. I actually don't think that that's allowed, right? I don't think you can put a counter on it there. Shouldn't be, no. Yeah. But it's not like really a major thing right there because this guy's record player is in such a good situation. And I mean, how should he okay. use a Ray effect? In his opponent's turn now. There's not. <laughs> no, he doesn't even have access. So, like, if, if Area Zero would get popped, he could summon the raid. Yeah, yeah, but there's no Twin Twister yeah. or anything. Yeah. So, that is GG for the first game. GG indeed. Yeah. Like, I think our Salomon Great player there did not have that much of enjoyment right there for the first game. On the other hand, our Sky Striker player. Probably did. <laughs> that was an easy pickup. Going second against Settlement Grade and then just having such an easy game, usually not the case. Yeah, usually you would have to play for like one, two, three negates and then try to like have a setup that your opponent can't play through your setup with like six grave effects. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Usually not that easy. Yeah. So, and that's a really unusual thing for settlement grades to actually break because it's like so consistent. It can cons it usually does the same thing over and over again, like turn after turn, but it is pretty likely that it is going to happen. So, yeah. There are nice little brick emojis, guys. I think they look really, really cute. <laughs> Just that wall brick. Yeah, what is a good side now? Like, when playing Salomon Grades, you really have to worry about this guy's Striker matchup. So, what are the cards you definitely have to have in your side deck? I mean, to compete against the deck. Cards that instantly come to your mind when siding against Sky Striker are, like, probably Imperial Order. Yeah, um, of course. <laughs> anti spell fragrance hasn't proven to be too effective, but I think in this matchup it could change because you can immediately swing for OTK. Absolutely. Um, Actually, at my last locus, I just had that situation where he flipped anti spell fragrance on me playing Salomon Grades. That was pretty good for him, actually. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Shad Rider, of course. Um, I don't know if it's too, uh, too, too strong to side because you have like so much stuff you want to side going second, as of course you usually want to start that you can't like side in seven cards for the. Striker matchup, so I think he might just have like anti spell or shared rise, maybe, or he, he can also play a sanctum engine. That would be also a possibility, of course. Do you think it's this, that stronger than strikers? No, because um, first of all, the deck doesn't necessarily care too much about um, this sanctum. I mean, it can out the sanctum, first of all. Of course, yeah. You can ash it, then maybe there's a roar, and then you can. Anchor it. Uh, if you have like any sort of hand trip plus anchor, you should be fine with it. And then it actually puts you in a major disadvantage because at some point your opponent can just shark cannon summon the uh, scythe from your graveyard and then you're boned. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if you're already having it in your side deck, you can probably put it in versus striker because it just makes you going first 
strategy a little better. Mm -hmm. But uh, like it's not really that powerful. It's just more of a, yeah, I can put in something else. So let's just put in the sanctums and sives as well. So I think there is a, there can only be one in hand of Paul again and engage. That is huge, actually. Oh, yeah. Um, the uh, dream. <laughs> there can only be one always feels like an instant win, actually, because if your opponent, uh, he, he will roar something on your turn because you're always going to play something. Um, yeah. Then you can just flip up, there can only be one, you have another whole turn. So your first turn doesn't even ha have to be like really good. You don't really need to break your opponent's board. Or kill their resources. Yeah. You just go for it, there can only be one. Have your Shizuku be a little bit weaker than Sunlight Wolf, so it can't crash and summon Foxy. Yeah. Which would still not be too good. And not look at that Salmon Great Hand. He drew into the Sanctuary again. I mean, this time he has other stuff to play with. Is it? But... It's Fusion of Fire and Double Circle, I think. It is indeed. And one monster card. I think it's Lady Debug. debug yeah, it's yeah. Debug. Lady Debug. So it should be a yeah. play. I mean, hmm. let's see. When that fifth card for our Skyscraper player is a hand trap, though, that could turn out to be really devastating. Should be Vader. Should be Vader. <laughs> Vader would suit perfectly right there, yeah. I mean, it, it would still be small combo. Yeah, you're right. So, what is that last card missing for both players? <laughs> I'm always kind of confused by that. Mid-game handshake, actually. <laughs> That's really... I don't know. I'm, I'm not usually doing that because it's like... Why would you yeah. do it? You can shake the hand before the game and after the match. And so you have, like, a nice atmosphere between you two. But <laughs> all these additional handshakes actually irritate me a little. <laughs> really? I like it. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Do you I, go I handshake it? a lot. Really? <laughs> Interesting. So he's going to go into Bailings, at Sanctuary, activate Sanctuary. Sadly, he already has away. Sanctuary, right? I oh, know. It, it actually stated that he had Sanctuary, but it looks yeah, like it is not. It still wasn't. Oh, nice. That's good for him. And you said that and you agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, it actually was was pointing out at the, at the graphics that there is Sanctuary, but it looks like there's none. Not, no, there's not, not, not activating Circle in draw phase is actually OK. If you have like, um, I mean, you can bait out the negation, the Veiler on debug because you usually hand trap it because like opening debug is kind of a weak move. So if you want to bait out a Veiler, which kind of worked, you can still go into your combo. Yeah, it's true. Like activating that in draw phase does only really matter versus uh, draw and lock bird, right? Yeah, and draw is not that relevant right now, especially not in Striker yeah. because Striker was never a deck that could really do something against Lockbird. Also, you wouldn't side it against Exactly, the that exactly. That's what I wanted to say. Like, Salomon Great does not suffer from, yeah. from draw. And, and just... like, even if you, you're starting with debug, then you can just still chain the circle to debugs, uh, to, to the Lockbird, so. <laughs> right, yeah. So that's not very good at all. It's better to see if the debug results, actually. I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. So. So that is pretty much full combo right there. Or is yeah. it just small combo? No, it's really full combo. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't get the counter trap setup, but he hard root, so it's fine. <laughs> it's all right, yeah. It's just like he had one less card in hand. <laughs> but I think this is a board that you can easily play it through, because as long as your roar doesn't survive the turn, you can't really out the deck and only be one already, so... Yep, and that could be game then already. Well, and he has a ray and engage, so actually he should be able to play easily. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, on top of that, he did not search for Foxy in any way so far, so Foxy is not ready to pop. This can only be one. Oh, multi-roll. This will be faced by Roar. It has to be. Like, one of the general things is if he's activating multi-roll, you should probably roar it, because if you do not, you will be in big trouble. Yeah, because then you can't roar anything. Did he just thumbs up? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's not good for him. Yeah, you're going to... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> of what? Not negating multi-roll. Yep, yeah, definitely. Now... Yeah. There's Hayate. So if he... Is he just trying to, to bait out the raw now? He really 
Is activating the raw on the effect of Hayate? That seems kind of odd yeah. to me because he would just summon the ray then. Yeah. So he did indeed bait out the raw, but I mean, that really was a bait out because he did not care about that Hayate effect. He already has yeah. engaged in hand. So he's perfectly fine with that. And he would just now summon <laughs> the, the ray and it's game over from there on. Yeah, because of Teacup. <laughs> yeah. Teacup 1 is uh, really putting in work again. I mean, he won the first game anyway, so it's going to do work again. Yeah. I mean, of course, he would have no access to, to engage if he wouldn't have hard draw it. Of course, the Salomon Great player cannot know that he hard drew it, but yeah. still, why, why would you want to... I mean, nah, just don't do it. Yeah. I mean, the matchup is like... Um... Of course, it's, it does not really favor you. We we talked about that, but yeah, still, I mean, that wasn't the best Kosher, decision. You're really in bad spot in this matchup, actually, because like he always has impermanence ash and phantasma against him <laughs> every time. I hate it. Yeah, I hate him actually. It's not <laughs> <laughs> for the rare case that he's watching right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can assure you, he's not hating you. But I think as a top contender for the top eight spots, he should be playing this tournament. Probably, yeah. Do you know where he is? Uh, yeah, he is. Okay. I mean, no reason for him not to. I mean, he lives in that area. -ish. Yeah, yeah, of course. More than me, for example. Like, driving there from Berlin is kind of kind of hard. Like, six to seven hours. <laughs> not a fun ride. What? What happened there? Is that not an engaging hand? Did, did we, like... Looks like we... This is probably not an engaging hand. Oh, maybe he just wanted to... No. Oh, no, he did not go into Kagari yet, I, so, really so he sure definitely he does not have engage. Not an engage. Like, I can't imagine that this guy does not have engage. <laughs> he cannot have engage. There's no way he has engage there. I mean, we, have, we have had this before. <laughs> there can be, like, some misunderstandings concerning the cards in hand. I mean, it also showed Sanctuary in the starting hand of Stefan. Yeah. But like, now he's activating the shark cannon. He probably searched for shark cannon and is now activating it to set it with multi roll. Yeah, takes out the Jack Jaguar. Oh yeah, that's so good. Getting that double use of the shark cannon. Shark cannon is so good versus Salomon Grades. Actually, Sky Striker started to main deck double shark cannon now because it's so powerful versus the most represented deck. Salomon grades, and I can totally see why you would play double uh, double of this card right now. Yeah, we discussed that in one of our earlier podcasts. Yeah. I think it was the one where we talked with Lukas Windel. Yeah, I think so. It was uh, YPFL Talk 2. Yeah. yeah. Windel roughly translates to diaper, by the way. <laughs> For those of you who did not know that yet. So he's Adding the counter trap there with Playing Foxy. two roars. That is so YCS Düsseldorf. <laughs> you think that definitely is the wrong decision by now? Playing double roar? Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, there's so much stuff that you can play right now. So many different hand traps. I mean, even Ghost Bell is getting favored by players again. Do you agree on that? Yeah, I like it. Negating Cold is good. Yeah, that's true. Negating Crow is good. Yeah, like just for negating called is already decent. Yeah, everyone is playing called. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so he decided to to keep the sunlight wolf. I would agree and, on that. You can add back your circle. Yeah, that's definitely true. And <laughs> right now it looks like uh, our Salomon Great player is not certainly. Um, he does not know that he cannot summon another sun Sunlight Wolf right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what he's just pointing so, at. Um, he definitely work. cannot do that. Nope. Not it's like, that's why um, this Sky Striker deck suffers a little from that can only be one, two, because now this Sky Striker player cannot switch from Shizuku to Kagari or Hayate because they're all machines. Yeah, but like the 
the thing is, it's like a deep barrier for the entire Salomon Great deck, and as soon as your opponent passes the turn without getting any value out of it, you can just send it away with multi roll and then definitely, win from definitely. that point on. And like, if you resolve like multiple engages in one turn for draw, especially, then you are probably going to draw into your next <laughs> That's one. That's usually the case. Did he just attack the Shizuku? What the hell is going on here? I think he's crashing to get Foxy, but he used Foxy on. Oh no! Oh Can't no, crash. that's so bad. I mean, does he does he not have? Oh, oh no! Don't oh. do this. <laughs> Oh, please yeah. no, please no. Like Sky Striker has been out for a year now. <laughs> I know. Like when Sky Strikers were just released, a lot of players were doing that. Like yeah. attacking over the Link Monster, and then the opponent was like, "Effect Ray, you really helped me with that." No, <laughs> so, like, thank you. I'm free engagers. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> but like, you're right. Now you should probably know that that is not a good strategy to take. Yeah. <laughs> there you can see it. Thank you for for getting me another Shizuku, which is actually able to resolve its effect right now. It's nice. Like, um, you want to engage in the end phase? You can get engaged in the end phase. <laughs> Take everything you want right there. So he added the counter trap. So that's the counter trap set right there. But that won't help with him at all. I mean, he has three back row. He has shark cannon ready. Yeah. So you can even take care of the Foxy at some point if that's relevant in any way, but it probably is not. He just has too many resources there. And so that wasn't much of a grind game there. <laughs> but isn't he true? By the way, he showed us there can only be one in the main deck. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that? I'm actually quite a big fan of it because it's like the best floodgate to have for his Salomon Grades and Salomon Grades is the deck you have to fear at the moment yeah, because but, you will be playing it a lot. But it's so bad versus Sky Striker going second, isn't it? It surely is. Yeah, you're right. I think it I mean, depends could... on, on how you calculate the metagame to be. If you think there will be a lot of Salomon Grades and a lower number of Sky Strikers, it's um, probably a good choice. But if you anticipate a lot of Sky Striker players, I mean, if you would have traveled to, to Cologne today to play the event, what would be your expectation? I'm pretty sure that there are many Sky Striker players. You're probably right, yeah. So maybe at the moment it is not that good. I would see the tournament as a mixture of uh, Sky Strikers and Salomon Grades, but I think that eventually more Sky Striker players will come out on top. Yeah, because of the advantage in the direct comparison, right? Yeah, also because like... <clears throat> Probably the Sky Striker players who are still playing the deck now have had like <laughs> much time to practice it. Yeah. And uh, okay, what what the hell's going on? Right that now? looks like Afterburner. Is he just like bailing that? Of course he would. I mean, if you do not, he will just pop your back row. No, nah, he doesn't even have spells in graveyard. Ah, he just did oh, that yeah, right. to get a spell into the graveyard. That is fine. Yeah, you're right. Well, fine-ish. I mean, yeah. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is he doing there? Will he pop the, there can only be one in this turn to get access to his link place again? First off, he will start with the most powerful card of Sky Strikers. Engajo. We talked about it a lot. What could be better than searching for a card of your deck and then also drawing a card? Which That's just such a beautiful to. feeling. Yeah, you, can't, you can't really draw now, but... Yeah, so just half of the enjoyment. Yeah. <laughs> but still, like, grabbing that... Was it Jamming Waves? I think he grabbed Jamming Waves, right? Uh, That's yeah. at least okay-ish still. But, I mean, um, do you think... Uh, what do you think about Summon Limit in, like, direct comparison to there can only be one? Like, that's the other floodgate Sky Strikers have been going into. Actually, let me just add that he activated multi roll on his set Sharken. That's so he keeps the there can only be one. That is very interesting. And I'm... like, on what did he activate it? Because he could have baited out the bailings before. Nah, he, he can just. Oh, he's crashing now. Oh, that is good. That is actually really good play. Oh, what's that? Yeah, that doesn't work, bro. Gazelle doesn't. Oh, it even... <laughs> Gazelle even says it on the court. You cannot do it in damage step. <sighs> Looks like he's not playing that deck for a long time so far. Or maybe he's just too nervous. Yeah, well, 
I mean, you the, not every player is necessarily like <laughs> practicing hours and hours and hours before every event, and some players apparently don't even read their cards. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we've had this discussion earlier. <laughs> it's true. So he goes into Gagari. Also, good side point that can't get Valored in the battle phase. Oh, yeah. That was really, really good. So he actually played around his own that can yeah. only be won. Played heavily into Cold by the Grave, though. That is correct, yeah. Oh, yeah, Cold would have really hurt there. Right. Zek comes uh, yeah. booster for additional damage. Yeah, and especially for the third card in the graveyard. Yeah, of course, yeah. Also, as there can only be one wasn't sent to the graveyard this turn, it's a pretty good chance that uh, he doesn't get to go into Shizuku. Which, actually, I have no idea why I said that, because <laughs> it doesn't make any difference if you're Eagle Booster or Kagari. Yeah, of course, of course. So, they're trying to figure out how many life points are left. And it looks like they came to the conclusion of 3,200. And Gaho, again. Mm, this card. And this time he gets the yeah. full joy of even drawing a card. Does, does he search for Anchor? Or does he search for... Yep, it is Anchor. Yeah. Would, would have been your second choice. Uh, he could still go for Area Zero to send away the There Can Only Be One, but yeah, apparently he's not a big fan of that. Yeah. Like... I mean, it still blocks his opponent, so... Yeah, it also blocks you, so... <laughs> but, I mean, he had a way to go into Kagari this turn. The Shizuku is not... It's great, but it's not the necessarily most important card. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, keeping that there can only be one for another turn is fine. I do agree, yeah. So there's Fusion of Fire in the hand of our Settlement Great player. Oh, he drew into Cold by the Grave, apparently. And he also drew into Cold. Hmm, interesting. So is he going to set the Engage, or is he going to set Eagle Booster? I think Eagle Booster is more safe, yeah. Yeah, Beagle Booster. And so you can obviously activate it in your opponent's turn, and then just set the Engage in your opponent's turn. Seems about right. Yeah, top deck judgment. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, you just got Yu-Gi-Oh'd, I mean... So... He just activates the fusion of fire there. <laughs> I don't know why there's that much confusion <laughs> right now. <laughs> I mean, so his face looks super confused at the moment. Ah, okay, ah, I didn't see that he activated the eagle booster. So he changed the eagle booster to the fusion of fire. Yeah, and there's no other card in hand, so he can't fusion summon Violet Chimera, which is actually kind of good because otherwise he would have get he had to get rid of Gazelle. I mean, why do you even? I don't know. Yeah, so apparently he did not know that that fusion of fire would just disappear right there. Yeah, but they will double check. They will get a judge. So guys, just put that judge emote into the chat. Oh yeah, Cosmos League is putting it in there. I mean, uh, for us the situation seems pretty clear, but they just want to double check what happens if... Fusion of Fire gets activated and he chains with the Eagle Booster to it. Because obviously the Eagle Booster says it's unaffected by other card effects. And yeah. a Fusion Summon is not the usual effectment by a card. So they will just double check whether it maybe can Fusion Summon. But the judge will just tell them that he cannot. Yeah. It's found its way to the graveyard. There's Gazelle. And he takes it with the anchor. <laughs> this solemn judgment. Like the, the, fun late. the funny thing is that like activating the fusion would have boned him. <laughs> like it wouldn't have even helped him. <laughs> he also drew judgment, so this card is not going to help him either. Yeah, it's Ritone, you're right. It was Philip as our judge right there. Or <laughs> our judge <laughs> sounds a little wrong. Of course, he's <laughs> the judge of the tournament, and we're just here casting for you guys. Would be nice to have a table judge for the featured match, though. That would help us a lot, actually. Yeah, but like 622 players, there's a lot of players to worry about, so I don't think they have enough judges to actually combine like that. 
And I mean, we're at least looking out here with all of you guys. I think somebody in the chat earlier stated out, <laughs> we have like 800 judges right now because everybody is watching yeah. that game and <laughs> is being the table judge for now. <laughs> He does not have Foxy engraved because he banished it with Shark Cannon as he activated multi-roll to target his set Shark Cannon that he, in response to himself, flipped up to banish Foxy. That was a perfect explanation. Yeet! <laughs> Sorry, headphone users. That was rude. There is called by the grave. Is there even a monster? Oh, yeah. <laughs> monster. There, there are a few monsters, definitely. Well, let's see. I mean, he's in such a good position. Ah, uh, GG, Mr. Rogers. I love that guy. Yeah, he was asking for you earlier in the chat. Asking, is that the infamous Leonard Koenig <laughs> <laughs> casting today? Yes, it is, indeed. It is? Come on. You don't have to gender that much. <laughs> and the There's a handshake. shake of hands hath happened. <laughs> Nice, nice, nice. So, very smooth round for Paul. Yeah, that was potentially like the number one spot in, in the in the points list from France, but we yeah. don't know. Just he is a Paul S, and apparently there's a Paul S in the lead of the world's point race, right? Yeah, he's still in the lead. I mean, he was in the lead. Maybe he's not at the moment after the last. I mean, I mean, is, is is that Paul S discrimination? Because if we are saying like. All the Paul S, like he's a Paul S, he could be the yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just all, all the Paul S are the same. An assumption, you know. But all the Paul S are the same to us. <laughs> we are Paul S's. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, but uh, that was really, really easy for him. Like his opponent didn't put up too much of a fight. Game one, it obviously was a very bricky hand for the seven. Oh yeah, that was awful. But that's what you get for playing foolish burial, honestly. You don't like foolish burial. <laughs> no, I hate it. Oh. There are better extenders to Anchor Take than Foolish Burial. For example? Uh, Will. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 